Hey everybody, so here's where we are in the process of writing this narrative essay. First thing I had you do was interview somebody and get a page full of notes. Then I had you take those notes and organize them into a mind map. One of these guys. So hopefully you've gotten to this stage here and you've got this all filled out. You answered the three questions, you left it alone, and you moved on to just taking all those elements of the story, everything, every individual thing that happened, and put it into this map, mine, it would be the blue bubbles. I wanna see those three colors as well, okay? I wanna see those three levels of information on your map, just like I've got them on mine. Well, here's the good news. Once you've got this done, you have an outline. This is basically the bulk of your essay already pretty much done. It's just a matter of putting it into paragraph form, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. And that brings us back to this guy. Remember, this is the model we're gonna be working with the whole time, this whole class. We're gonna be returning back to this model, even though the structures of the essays we'll be writing will change slightly from one to the next, Ultimately, it's going to go back to your understanding of this. This is always going to be true no matter what essay we're working on. So you're going to get really tired of me drawing on this board every time we do an essay. But like I said before, I want you to get this idea that this is essay structure. It's as simple as that. Very basic, very elemental, okay? Again, like I said, we're going to attack this one piece at a time. So I'm not just going to assign an essay for you now, okay? What I am going to assign is the first piece of the essay. We've talked a little bit about those pieces. You've got the introduction, the conclusion, and you've got the body paragraphs. For today, we are not worried about these guys, okay? We're not talking about the intro or the conclusion. We're just talking about the body paragraphs. And here's the reason why. You've pretty much written them already, okay? That map that you created with all the elements of the story, that information is being transferred into these three paragraphs right here. So what I'm saying is this essay is a narrative essay, which means you're telling a story, right? This paragraph is not telling the story and neither is this one. And that's why we're not worried about it today because it's a different paragraph. They have different jobs and the rules are different for them. However, for these three body paragraphs, the rules are exactly the same as what we've already been talking about. Remember when we talked about the paragraph you wrote for me on the first day of class, which was what kind of writer are you? And then we did the apple plant job, right? Where you can see how a paragraph actually comes together. And we talked about those elements of a paragraph and I had you color them with three colors. That's what this is. So what we were really talking about this whole time is how to write body paragraphs. Everything you learned about a paragraph is true for each one of these body paragraphs, right? So we talked about a main idea. Every paragraph should have a main idea. So should a body paragraph, right? That means you are going to have a topic sentence right there telling your reader what the main idea of that paragraph is. Same with this one, same with this one. It's going to each one, each one is going to have its own topic sentence basically, right? We also talked about giving evidence or supporting details depending on how detailed the paragraph actually gets. In this case, it doesn't have to get too detailed. It doesn't have to get too deep into the information because remember, a narrative essay is pretty much the simplest type of essay to write. It's why I like to start with that one. They're gonna be very simple paragraphs, right? It really is just gonna be a topic sentence and then evidence or explanation, okay? Um, that's what's going on in that paragraph. Same goes for this guy. We're gonna have another topic sentence saying what's gonna be going on in this paragraph. And then the rest of it is gonna be explaining what happened, the details of your story. Same for the third body paragraph. So all the information you have right now is what goes into writing those three paragraphs. Now, talking about the structure of those individual body paragraphs. Remember what we talked about when we were going over the structure of a paragraph in general, right? Basic paragraph structure, topic sentence, this part, believe it or not, is going to throw off a lot of people because it's been my experience in this class that this is one of the hardest sentences for people to come up with on this particular essay because they want to go right into telling the story. Well, first this happened, and then this happened, and then this happened, and then this happened. Okay, let's think of that first sentence. Well, first this happened. Is it really a topic sentence? Remember, topic sentence doesn't just mean it's the first sentence. It means it's actually doing something that sets off the rest of the paragraph. It's giving your reader the main idea. 
That's what a topic sentence is doing. It's not just telling me the first thing that happened in this series of events. It's telling me what this paragraph is going to be about. So if I just say, um, uh, what was the story I was working with? Uh, Jerry and his appendicitis, right? Um, uh, if I just started off my paragraph by saying, um, Jerry woke up a little late that morning. Well, okay, that was the first thing that happened in the story, but is that a topic sentence? Jerry waking up late, is that a main idea? Is everything I write going to go right back to that idea of Jerry waking up a little bit late? No, it doesn't. It's a detail in the story, but it's not a main idea. So I need a main idea. Before I go into any of these details, all the elements of the story, I have to put a, par a, a sentence at the top of the paragraph that sets off everything that's going to happen. It's gonna be kind of a general idea, okay? It's not gonna to be too focused uh, or, or too um, detailed because these are the details. It's just setting off the details. So what I need is a sentence that gives me the idea, the gist of what's about to come. So for example, if I started that paragraph, Jerry woke up that morning feeling a little bit off. Okay, do you see what I did there? It's not specific, but it's setting you up for the specifics, right? He's feeling a little bit off. Now, if you remember when I was going over my pretend paragraph before and I started giving you the details of the story, um, he could smell his mom cooking bacon and it made him feel nauseous. He felt a little bit feverish. His stomach hurt a little bit. These are all details of the story, but they're all going back to that first sentence. Jerry felt a little bit off when he woke up that morning, right? That's why it's a topic sentence. It really is telling me the main idea. It's giving my reader a little bit of information so that they have an expectation now. Oh, he's feeling a little bit off? Well, in what ways was he feeling off? Well, that's where the details are gonna come in and that's gonna be the rest of that paragraph, okay? Then, when I get to the middle of the story, I need another topic sentence. This is still a body paragraph and it still has to obey the rules of paragraph structure. So I need a topic sentence. I'm not gonna say what the next thing that happened, okay? Jerry went into an ambulance. That's the next thing that happened. But this whole paragraph isn't about Jerry being in an ambulance. Now, if it was about him being all in, in an ambulance, I guess that might suffice as a topic sentence, maybe. But in my case, it doesn't, okay? A lot of different things happened, and I need a topic sentence that's gonna set that up. So that's what I want you to keep in mind as you start working on these three paragraphs, okay? Now, keep in mind, it is three paragraphs. This time, that doesn't mean an essay is always three body paragraphs. If you learned that in high school, that was wrong. If your teacher ever said an essay should be five paragraphs, or it should be seven to paragraphs, or it should be five to seven paragraphs, those answers are all wrong because it's what that teacher specifically wanted. That doesn't mean that's the rule for writing an essay. There is no length rule, okay? It's whatever your teacher asked for or whatever you feel is necessary to finish that assignment. If the teacher asks for a page count or for a paragraph count, that's what you should give them, okay? So in this case, I'm giving you a five paragraph count. I'm looking for five paragraphs because I'm looking for this structure, but again, that doesn't mean that essays, that there's this golden rule of essays that says they should be five paragraphs. That is not the case. It's the case right now because it's what I wanna see on this essay, okay? So make sure you keep it to five. Make sure you keep your story, your three body paragraphs to three body paragraphs. Don't give me less, don't give me fewer, don't give me more, okay? I really wanna see three this time, okay? And that's pretty much it. That's the assignment for today, okay? So if you go to Thursday um, on Canvas, you will see there's a new blog entry and there's an assignment. Watch the video and write three body paragraphs, okay? We're gonna pick up on, uh, again on this, um, on this essay the next time. So again, stay tuned. We're gonna do this one piece at a time. So the next lecture, I'm gonna be talking about these other paragraphs. Uh, I do want to throw in one extra piece. I'm noticing I'm getting emails from people about the blog. There's a lot of questions about what you're supposed to do with it. Are you supposed to turn it into me? Are you supposed to print it out? No, you don't have to do any of that, okay? At this point, I'm not even going to see it. It's just for you. The blog is your blog, and you have complete control over it, and you should be posting when you feel like posting, basically. Don't wait until the last week to do it, but periodically, post these things onto the blog, or if you wanna keep it easy, 
do it every time you write one. Just write your journal directly to the blog and then you've taken care of everything, okay? This is gonna be counted as your final for this class, this blog, so it is really important. And it's also gonna be the easiest points you earn for this class because I'm not grading it for structure and grammar and all the things we talk about in class. It's purely ideas. That's what the blog is. It's just about ideas. So if you give me 20 minutes of uh, 20 minutes worth of writing on each blog entry, each journal entry you do, you get full credit for it. It's as simple as that, okay? You don't have to send me anything. You are gonna send me something when we get to the last week of class because obviously I need to see your blog at some point so I can read it and give you points for it and slap a grade on it, right? I can't do that unless I read it, but I'm not gonna read it until the end of the class. So don't worry about it yet. Don't worry about um, sending me an address or telling me that you did a, a journal. You don't have to do that. I'm not keeping score yet. I realize they're showing up uh, um, on the assignments, but those are all gonna be tabulated at the very end and that's when you actually get a score for them. Okay, so just keep doing it. Keep up with it. Keep up with the journals. Make sure you are publishing them to the blog, and at some point, I will give you further instructions on what to do with it, okay? And that's pretty much it. That's what I wanted to leave you with. Um, so I will talk to you again soon.